If you ever wondered how to build a Champions League winning team, look no further, ESPN FC ran a fun uh, little breakdown of all the steps that has to be taken into consideration when trying to build a Champions League winning team. So round up your mates, sit down with some popcorn and figure out how you can start a team and follow the step-by-step -step recipe. And you might be in the Champions League final, probably not, but we are here to inspire hope. First, first things first, go into your bank account, withdraw a million dollars, <laughs> a billion dollars. A million's not going to get you very far, Dr. Evil. <laughs> <A b> <laughs> Go draw a billion dollars One billion. go buy a club. Like, yeah. How does it even get you like a top 10 club? Regardless. You can start, but you never know. You or can build up. So franchise. that moves us over to the very first point, uh, which is money. So according to the reports, which is very accurate, is that the average value of finalist squad since 2015 199.1 million, whereas the runners up 129. So, looking at the specific examples over the last two or three years, Barcelona spent 244 million, whereas Juventus 129. A significant difference in spending in 2013 14, Real Madrid spent 415 <laughs> million to Atletico Madrid 69.8 million. But 69, as we know, significant number. As we move forward <laughs> to number two, so this is basically states that you should own your players. This is kind of a given, but it's also interesting to look at the stats. So, <laughs> as you know, Jason, as you'll find out more in football, you can you can move players over on a free or you can loan players in. So, uh, the average loaned players uh, in their team is 1.2 for the winners and the runners up 4.6. This is interesting but only because last year... Seems like this also gives you a lot of great strategies how to finish in second place. Yes, it does. You <laughs> want to be a runner-up? Loan some players. Follow, this, follow these graphs. <laughs> uh, last season, it's interesting, Juventus had eight free loan players by last season to Barcelona's zero. And Barcelona don't need to loan in anyone. And what about the Real Madrid Atletico? Real Madrid had zero and Atletico Madrid had eight. And the so Bayern Wolfsburg, isn't that the year before? Bayern, uh, Bayern Dortmund. It Dortmund, was actually, sorry. that was the only time where it flip-flopped. No, it was still in favour, but Bayern had two loan players, Dortmund had four. So, key message here is own your players. Moving on to number three, this is very important. Maximize your youth academy, Jason. And the best graphic, which I'm going to throw to you, is the nice image of Messi they had uh, attached with this graphic. If you need a refreshing of your memory. Oh, the baby. Baby Messi. Uh. She was pretty good. So, I mean, this is key. Key in any sport, Jason, I'm sure you agree. Much more, than more in football. Grow your players mm -hmm. from a younger age and you will see Take the fruits of your labor. Take notes here. Grow. Manchester United, more. fantastic class and in involved uh, uh, Butt and Skulls and Beckham have never really hit the same heights since that, their, their academy is, is still growing, they still have some academy players in there like Lingard who you see coming through, but Barcelona are the masters of this trade. Yeah, Lingard man, <sighs> God, he's right up there with Messi, Suarez, Neymar, Ronaldo. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. He's in that list. Sorry Lingard. He's in that ballpark. To highlight the difference in the numbers, it's, it's Barcelona you expect in every Champions League final, you would expect to lead in their homegrown players and you are absolutely right, so you look at Barcelona and Juventus, 13 Youth team graduates. Is that a little bit skewed though? Just because if you if you can play in the youth Barcelona system, of course you want to play in the youth Barcelona. Like, don't they get the best youth players? Like Juventus would in Syria, or you yeah. would think you Manchester United or, or yeah, Manchester United would get in in England. I think you're right, but the thing about the the scouting system in Barcelona, um, they start to choose wisely. So it's not right. like you could have the choice. You you could want to all you want, but sometimes you're in a massive pond with a bunch of big fish. So you might need to think to yourself, am I really going to get noticed as much and get the, the attention? So, or would I go to a Celta Vigo and maybe find a better chance so of breaking by through? By massive pond and lots of big fish, you just mean like an ocean? Yeah, they're in an ocean <laughs> of Barcelona. You're, you need to be the biggest fish. You need to be top dog in that ecosystem to find your way into the Barcelona first team. But they continuously graduate these, these players in. Just saying. It's Oceans. Uh, oceans. There's seven Ecosystems, of them. Ecosystems, right, right. Right. You got it, you're good. But uh, moving forward. So, uh, <laughs> as I said, Barcelona, 13 to Juventus is two. Real Madrid had five, Atletico had three. The interesting one was back in 2010, 2011. It was very close. Barcelona had 14 um, graduated youth players in their team. Manchester United had nine. United, as I mentioned, are still a staple for growing their players and moving forward. Next on the list, if you're tired by this point, don't give up while trying to build a team here. This one's a little closer. <laughs> it's identical. Yeah, nearly identical. What, point one, that's all you need. So this no, is- No, so that, 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 okay, I can explain this one, right? Explain so this it. Is, in terms of what they were saying with time with club, like the time spent with your club compared yes. to teams uh, that don't, it, it doesn't matter. It's not, it's one of those things where it's four and a half years 
for each. Yeah. Right. And I found that very, very interesting. And I think a great example of that is Luis Suarez. Yeah. Only spends X amount of years with the club. And I think that even says more true to managers. Yeah. Pep Guardiola's of the world. That, that would be an move. interesting one. They never covered managerial managers in this, which is um, one of my only flaws is you need a good manager if you're going to build all this. So if you're still sitting there with your popcorn, I don't know why popcorn's there. Why? I like popcorn. I, li I love popcorn, Jason, really quick, off topic. Sweet or salted? Salted? With butter. Sweet and salted. No. What kettle do you corn. do? Kettle corn. That's sweet. And there's also salt but I just need that. it sweet. I need it sweet. Everyone needs it sweet in the UK. It's far better. Far better. Unless, yeah. you're, unless you're one of those guys that salt it and then drench it with butter. Is that you? In the movies. Ah, sticky fingers. Either way, <laughs> moving forward, I agree with you here. Sometimes you don't need the players to be there for a tenure to get the most out of them. Messi is a very good example. Ryan Giggs is a good example with Manchester United. But you just mentioned it there. Hit the nail <coughs> on the head. Suarez comes in. Barcelona are to a next yeah, they, I mean, it's a perfect example because Messi, too, has been there for, whatever, 10 years. Yeah. That's not So true. it's like a good mix. I think years? it's a mix. Eight years? Allow them no, in. Whatever. He's been there for a while. You get the point. Uh, so it balances out. Uh, the next one, I think, had to do with um, uh, age, age, which is interesting also because... They're saying it doesn't matter. It do well, they're saying... It, it, not that it doesn't matter. It's a, What I took away from that graph is there's a balance. Mm -hmm. You need veteran leadership. You need people who have been in those positions before, experience, and you also need... The youth, you need the legs, man. Yep. There's guys who are 23 that can just outrun anybody who's 35. So can we see that graphic to, in the comparison of um, the <coughs> age, which is very close as well. It's not as distinct as the money or the homegrown players that we've seen. But in this situation, it's very close again. The average age of players in final squads since 2005. Again, last season, Barcelona were uh, 26, whereas Juventus were 28.6. So very close there. Uh, Real Madrid had another one which they had a younger team, 25.7 to Atletico's 25.9. Bayern Munich had a slightly older team to Dortmund, so it really doesn't matter. It fluctuates, it flip-flops. Pirlo last year played Pirlo. alongside Pogba. Anyway, that midfield balances at 26 years old. Pirlo's, you know, 100 with a god like <laughs> Zeus-like beard, and, and Pogba is uh, is With a Pokemon haircut. Yeah, it was wild. Wild, yeah. <laughs> that was wild. And to conclude, uh, the, the recipe for success, it is recruit locally. So by this, it may, it's showcasing that the amount of players that are brought in from the nearby country or towns or whatever else overwhelms the number of foreigners in the team. So if you look at the graphic, average number of homegrown players in the final squad since 2005. Again, very close still, but 10.2 for the winners, 9.1 for the runners-up. Barcelona were actually outnumbered. In the final, Juventus had 14 homegrown players to Barcelona's 13. Juventus, as we know, have a lot of Italians in their team. Real Madrid had one more, I would say, homegrown player than Atletico Madrid. But when you look back at the history, such as 2010, Barcelona had 15 homegrown players brought in, different to Manchester United. Again, don't confuse this with academy players. You can bring in a kid who's from Argentina, like Barcelona did with Messi, mm -hmm. and you grow him up through your academy, but he's not a homegrown Spanish player. Do you know player. who has only homegrown players? International teams. Get it? Because they're all from the same home. Go to your home, ball. <laughs> Go to your home! Salvage yourself. That He's pointing to you to leave. And that's... You salvage yourself leave. with the Happy Gilmore comment. Leave. Just get out. Nonetheless... Get out. That concludes all the ingredients you need to build a Champions League winning team. Thanks again for the graphic there. ESPN FC, that is some nice work. Nice, Francis. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Two jokes and he's out. Let us know what you guys think in the Not comment section Not my fault you below. don't get the reference. Make sure to hit us I'm up out. on Twitter at 280 Sports, and subscribe.